Hello and welcome everybody, I'm Warpapa Varian and this is Crusader Kings 2 and this is the last episode of Quantum Leap. Yes, I know, I know, uh, there are so many of you in the comments and I appreciate every single one of you by the way. There are so many of you in the comments that were like, hey, you, you gotta keep this going. And I did agree until the Mongols just kept going and going and going and then the Holy Roman Empire did what it, you know, did. You can see it on the map right here. So, let's talk about this, let's talk about the series, and let's talk about the future of Quantum Leap as a concept on the channel. So, Quantum Leap, of course, uh, I've mentioned this in episode 1, has been around for ages, it has been around for a long time. There are different rule sets, and I will change up the rule set for the next Quantum Leap series, which will come right away after this one, I can guarantee you that much already. So, in this one, in this series that is ending now, we actually literally played the life of a character. Meaning, when that character died, we would hand it over to someone else, we would automatically be transported into another person. And that is all fine and dandy, but every now and again, and you can see it in a couple of episodes as well, we are transported into characters that have no chance of survival. Sometimes they are, you know, old, sometimes they are sick, sometimes they are, I don't know, just sad. Either way, the way it works was uh, okay, I think, to push this world to greater limits without me doing anything about it, right? It's just the AI doing nonsense. And and me just watching because my character is unusable and that has its benefits don't get me wrong here but for the next quantum leap series i will change up the premise a tiny little bit and when i say that what i mean is that essentially we're going to play for 30 years as the dynasty of whichever character we rolled meaning if i roll a character that is 68 years old and has an heir that is 17 and this character dies i will just play the heir until 30 years total are over and we're going to do this, I can already tell you, because I'm very excited to return to a mod that I haven't played in ages. We're going to do that in the SVN version of uh, good old Elder Kings. Meaning we're going to use the developer version that is online that you can also play, that everyone can actually access. And we're going to jump every 30 years to a different dynasty. I think it should be a lot of fun. I'm very excited to do it and I'm very excited to uh, form a world that isn't just, you know, Europe, just vanilla CK2. So either way, I'm very excited for Elder Kings next. If you have any other suggestions, I know that Arumba back in the day when he did it, when he did like a Quantum Libre revamped kind of series, he played until he formed an empire. I think that is a bit far. I don't think, you know, that makes a lot of sense. Mostly because when it comes to my playstyle, forming an empire and usurping titles, if I really wanted to, would be very fast or very short, depending on, you know, or very long, I mean, depending on how... Uh, the characters are situated in their characters, so like in their actual traits and whatnot. I think that that is a fairly arbitrary measurement. I don't play to do something powerful. If I have a character, you know, that doesn't really want an empire, then I'm never going to form it. But I want to have a limit that is, you know, giving me more freedom while at the same time not making it so that I have to blob. And I think 30 years are a good limit. If you have any other suggestions, then do let me know. Although, again, I don't really want to go with the one that Arumba used back in the day, although there was a great series as well. Now, I want to say, and I know that the map is transforming in the background, don't uh, worry about that. You can, of course, you know, uh, look at that while I talk about organizational topics. But I do want to point out that I'm very thankful for all of you and for all of your very positive feedback when it comes to the new editing, when it comes to the new design. Uh, also of the thumbnails, I actually, I love the thumbnails, I'll be honest with you, way better than my old ones, but that aside, uh, we're having a lot of fun, I think, uh, with what the channel is doing, we're mixing it up a bit, I haven't edited it ever, really, you know, beyond like speeding up achievement runs, I guess, and now we're doing that on the regular, I assume and I hope that my editing will become better as we go on, meaning that the quality of the series that you see on the channel should only go upwards from here on out, which of course isn't hard, judging by the old quality. Now that aside, I want to thank all of you for the very positive feedback on exactly that, on the experiments, on taking a new approach, not just to CK2, but also to the video production. It means a lot to me because, you know, I do this as a side job and getting the confirmation that what I do when I, you know, do an experiment is something that makes sense uh, is very, very positive for me, of course. And I do want to say, when it comes to the current, or rather the now ending series, uh, I had a lot of fun. It went down a very strange road, you know, not just with the Holy Roman Empire, of course, also with uh, the Mongols. I'm, you know, I'll be honest with you, I think I'm in severely misinformed when it comes to the Mongols, because I must have played so much HIP, I just assumed that the Mongols eventually would break apart, but I think that is just an HIP thing. I, I, at this point, I'm pretty convinced that Vanilla doesn't do that at all, but the Mongols aside, that is of course chaos, and I think in the future I'll just turn them off, or rather push them back to like 1250, as you know, they would spawn in historically, or rather 1250. 08, I think they they popped up. Either way, we're gonna we're gonna do that, and we're gonna have them in a historical kind of environment instead of having them this early and having them literally conquer all of the map. But beyond the Mongols, I do think it's pretty cool what the AI did during this playthrough. You know, not just the wars all over in Iberia, not just the wars all over in the. Uh, 
Asia Minor, but also, you know, of course, the Fourth Crusade. We had a, we had a children's crusade. We had a couple of real crusades. We had a couple of uh, Tengri Great Holy Wars. I don't think we ever had a Jewish Holy War. I don't, th I don't think that actually ever happened. And as you can see, Israel was doomed. I mean, the thing about it is, if you create an entirely new nation that has a hostile religion, because of course, you know, it's neither Muslim nor is it Catholic, meaning it won't get support from either side that is eyeing for the Holy Land, you have to over-prepare them if you ever want to hand them over to the AI. And I, well, you know, quite obviously didn't do that. Had I done it, then Israel wouldn't be gone from the map at this point. But the thing about it is that uh, that was a lot of fun, converting there and making it so, you know, that we had a very different approach, except uh, or in comparison to just having, you know, your generic Catholic kingdom. I think that's fun. I think that is what how I want to do it in the future as well. Uh, you know, there, there were so many different chances. I actually, I will admit it, look, I think I'm a pretty good player at CK2. But the thing about it is, when you play... When you're used to recording just 30 minutes straight, you just talk during those 30 minutes the entire time, you're more focused on whatever you do, but then you sit down, you play like for an hour and you're gonna cut it down to 20 minutes, right? You play for an hour and uh, you just kind of get sloppy. And I got quite sloppy, you know, I, I failed that Arab, uh, that invasion for Arabia as the Lollard, Lord of Mecca. Uh, I failed like a couple of wars that I shouldn't have failed, the, the one in Hungary I remember, I think we also failed some stuff with the first episode, the very first episode in Iceland. And uh, I, <laughs> I want to say, at the end of the day, I think there was nothing wrong with that, because failing in CK2 doesn't necessarily mean that, you know, what you did wasn't fun. It just means, of course, that you weren't able to blob out. But I will say that uh, this new format did definitely make me play uh, a bit sloppier, because it's just, you, you just don't, you know... When, you, when you're playing for an entire hour, when you don't constantly talk, when you're just like, you know, I'm only going to talk about the most important things that happen anyway, then you just don't really think about the... Uh, necessity of make doing everything the right way so that you know the 30 minutes that you usually record would be filled with content and this one you can record for an hour and like 40 minutes of it can be garbage and then the rest makes sense but okay that, that aside don't let me bore you here now what i really like about ck2 is that everything can fall apart at a moment's notice and i think we've seen that in the quantum leap series as well uh, everything went a bit crazy and the only sad thing is that the Mongols will never fall apart, but, you know, that aside, I really actually like, and, and I'm gonna talk about this as if it would happen, which it probably won't, I will warn you right now, but I really like the idea of what was created in Crusader Kings 2 when it comes to the Holy Roman Empire, except in EU4. You can convert a CK2 game, a CK2 save game, to EU4, of course, and having a mega Holy Roman Empire that is incredibly overpowered in CK2, by the way. It's not a, it's not a, uh, it's not fun to have this mega Holy Roman Empire in the center of Europe because it is practically unbeatable. But that changes in EU4 because in EU4 you just have this blob of. Uh, duchies, this blob of counties, of bishoprics, of, you know, some kingdoms, of course, we have, I think, Bohemia, we have Franconia, Thuringia, uh, even Holland, yeah, the Netherlands exists, or Frisia, I should say. Uh, all of those play an important role, I think, in these circumstances, and I actually really like the idea of that. I like the idea of them sticking around and giving us kind of a shot, you know, at uh, having an interesting EU4 game, but I want to point out, when I say, you know, wouldn't it be interesting to have this in EU4, I don't mean to say I will play this in EU4, okay? <laughs> I I don't have that much fun playing EU4 compared, uh, compared to playing CK2, so I think I'm going to stick to EU4. Uh, I, oh god, no, don't say that. I think I'm going to stick to uh, CK2. But with that being said, I, I really like how this general series turn out, although in the end it definitely went to a very insane point. Uh, I also think it, could, it would have been nicer, you know, had Bulgaria not been pummeled by the Mongols, because had that not happened, they could have possibly been able to reunify the Byzantine Empire, which would have been cool, but alas, uh, the Mongols were around, of course. I do, however, also think that it is quite obvious that the world at this point in this CK2 save is fairly static. I mean, look at, you know, Central Europe, then you have Britannia over in the islands, and whatever happens, you know, they may rebel against one another, there may be a different emperor on either side, be it Britannia or be it the Holy Roman Emperor, but it will always be this huge empire blob. And what I really think is that, you know, at that point you have to call it just because you can't destroy every single empire by playing there. Of course you could, but it wouldn't really add anything to the experience. You would just be create or destroying 
ongoing progress that has been made over the centuries. So I think it's a good point to call it here. What I do really also uh, appreciate about CK2 CK2 do, do, CK doing us a favor here is Azre, if you can see it right there. They have kicked out the Catholics from North Africa, which is always a, a sore on my poor eyes. You know, when you look at this damn Catholic North Africa, at Tunisia, at Algeria, it's, it makes no sense. It is completely inhospitable, it wouldn't be really serviceable at the time. You know, the Knights of Sardinia and Corsica certainly couldn't have held it, and yet they always do, except in this one, which makes me very, very happy that I, you know, if, if you think about it, I think this is a huge step forward. I also do like the big Mali. Mali, by the way, I, uh already converted the safe to EU4, and I, I did see Mali there, it's quite nice. They they created a very solid realm, as well as, of course, Pala. I mean, look at Pala, that's a huge realm uh, over, you know, in control over Tibet, of course, as well. Although, not directly. I, I think the tributary ship there is kind of a cool concept. At the end of the day, uh, there were some things that I was hoping would go differently. For example, remember that one adventurer that lived in whom he never actually got his invasion against Israel off? He had like 20k troops, but he was in prison, so that, that never fired. And then you had the other adventurer living in Iberia after he took over, uh, you know, part of the Atlantic coast, and he converted to Catholicism before invading Leon. What a shame that was. I mean, that would have just changed the entire name of the game, you know, everything going on in Iberia as well. But instead, we have the Umayyad blog. Uh, blobs there and that's of course you know there's nothing wrong with that but it would just uh, kind of be nice I suppose if it were the other way around if instead we had a bit more action there and not you know that much just static empire blobbing this is why again you know I already pointed this out and I of course know that this isn't really news to anyone that has played uh, played CK2 and has converted it to E4 but this is why the Holy Roman Empire while being a huge nuisance in CK2 once it's this big as it is here on this map you know, while it is that in CK2, if you convert the save to EU4, you get this wonderful clusterfuck, and you know, I'm just gonna call it that, you get this wonderful clusterfuck of these tiny, tiny, tiny states that are all just hanging out, you know, they will all participate in the Reformation Wars in the 30 Years War, whatever it kind of becomes there. They will all take their own business, you know, to their neighbors and try to destroy them. It's a fun kind of adventure to witness that sort of stuff going on, and I'm a huge fan, and this is why I'm like, maybe I will actually touch the UFO, although again, not a guarantee. This save is cool, but not cool enough to continue playing it in CK2, because I think for CK2 it is ruined with the Mongols, the Holy Roman Empire, etc, etc, but for EU4 it might be perfect. Well, either way, I will indeed change the formula of Quantum Leap. We will return long term, of course, as always, to dynastic playthroughs, to truly dynastic playthroughs where we just, you know, play one dynasty the entire game. But I think for the moment, I am very hungry for Quantum Leap. I'm very hungry for edited Quantum Leap and, you know, get some action going. And hopefully, especially with the 30 years rule making it so that I will get some stuff done instead of just dying over and over and over again. Ah, uh, yeah, you know, it just reminds me, how many characters did we have that just instantly died? We had the Indian guy, I think he was our second character in northern India. We had a... Ah, uh, who else did we have? Man, we had so many people. We had the dude that lived in Tibet and was just immediately got imprisoned, was like badly hurt, thrown into the oubliette. What a shame that was. Then we had the one character in Oman, no, in Yemen actually, and we did fairly alright with him, although he just passed away, that was quite unlucky. And then, I look, I will admit it, okay, me taking over my, not my vassal, but my uh, beneficiary, my beneficiary, that's the word, my crusade beneficiary in the Hungarian Jerusalemite case was of course kind of cheating as far as I'm concerned, because it was a different play, uh, uh, different character, right? How am I allowed to play them? But then again, I think we had a great time down there in the Holy Land as well, making it so that there's actually some stuff happening there instead of Jerusalem just conquering the entire Levant, as they always do, and, well, you know, no such thing as Jerusalem exists anymore, Israel neither, they are all gone. It's, it's a shame, honestly, when you create these empires, when you have a dynasty, every time I played them and every time I was forced to leave them behind, I think it's just my playstyle that the AI can't cope with. You know, I, I have a playstyle where, for example, I don't centralize the realm, I don't believe in that, I think if you keep it decentralized, your vassals will be happier and will never rebel, or if, if they will rebel, they won't be as numerous and you can easily destroy them and then substitute. That is something that I constantly do, but I think the AI can't actually deal with it. I think it makes it so that the AI gets very frustrated and then tries to immediately change the laws to worse laws, which makes the AI very unpopular, which makes it so that everyone rebels against them. Every single time I handed over a title, except the Holy Roman Emperor, 
title they always collapsed. I mean, think about it. Aquitaine, sure, it stood, but it only stood with the help of the Holy Roman Emperor. Uh, France later on took it out completely. Then, of course, we have uh, Iceland, which just collapsed in on itself. The Ivaring dynasty kind of united it with Denmark long term, but, you know, that's, of course, not re uh, re really neither here nor there. The one that we had in Yemen, he did absolutely nothing, like literally nothing. Then Mecca, of course, also quite literally nothing as well. Um, the one in Trebizond, that is such a shame. The one in Trebizond literally just fell apart. Uh, what is it? Yeah, that's honestly, that's like the biggest shame to me. The Trebizond play where we could have helped them create the East Roman Empire, it simply didn't become reality. It's a, it's a huge shame, but in the at the end of the day, you know, the world had our impact, our imprint on it. And I think that's pretty cool to see. And, and I really enjoyed Quantum Leap. I'm very happy to see that so many of you enjoyed it. As this time lapse is coming to an end... So is me talking about it. And we here we have a small overview over the religions at the time of the end of this time lapse. We're not that far in, but like if I just let it run further, the Mongols will literally conquer the entire map. So let's just not do that. We have a fairly strong Britannia. We have a very strong Holy Roman Empire. Although the Emperor himself, weirdly enough, is a heretic. They still elected him. Everybody else appears to be Catholic. They're doing fine. Jerusalem, of course, fell apart. You can see it right there. What a shame. And the Disrael dynasty actually only has this one lady, which is normally married. She is also Muslim, so that dynasty is also gone. I literally destroyed all dynasties that we played with. Good God, I destroyed them all. Now you can see uh, the Mongols definitely got rid of Trebizond. Uh, that was a pipe dream. That was something that was never going to happen, I suppose. The restoration of the East Roman Empire never going to be a thing. But as you can see, you know, everybody's doing fairly well here, and... You know, maybe we're gonna revisit the save. Maybe we're gonna revisit the save in EU4. I don't want to guarantee anything. I'm just saying I think this could be a cool EU4 save. But as always, you know the drill. I want to thank the members of the channel that are making videos like this one possible and that's ma that made the entire series possible, of course. Namely, the Barons, Aaron, Stefan, the Richest, T, Snywolf, Emma, Mello, Thomas, Lachlan and Mitchell. As well as, of course, the Counts, Shifty X and the Naughty and Wombat. And last but not least, the Gorgeous Dukes, Suspicious Dark, Benedict, Nathan, Knight of Squires, Kenneth, Alexo, Roboman, My Dad, Left Me at Arby's, and Eric and Aiden. Thank you so much for supporting the channel. Thank you to all the viewers for supporting the channel as well, for leaving all these nice comments, for making very interesting points and you know, kind of giving me some input that I can work with. Now, that being said, I want to thank all of you for watching the series and later, Alligator.